Okay, I've got a bit of a challenge for you. So this is PHP code, uh, perfectly valid, and I'm gonna run it for you in a second just to prove that. Um, what it does is there's a function called add, and uh, you can pass it one or more numbers, but each time you pass it uh, in parentheses like this, and then the final time you pass an empty set of parentheses, and you'll get the result. So here, add one, you'd expect the answer to be one. Here, add one and two, you'd expect the answer to be three. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you'd expect the answer to be, let's see, 28. Okay, so if you are an experienced programmer, or if you've been doing this for a while, um, you can probably reason about what's happening here. But if you can't figure this out, or, or if this seems confusing to you, take a minute, uh, I'll, I'll pause the video for you, and then you can uh, try and figure out what, what is actually happening here. How can this possibly work? Okay, so I'm gonna pause the video right now, and then we'll be right back. And we're back. So how can something like this possibly work? Um, the first thing you should be looking at is, after you pass in a, uh, an integer here, what are you getting back? Well, if you're able to uh, call it, then it must be something that is actually callable. So in this case, uh, that means either a class, which is invocable, or but more likely a function. And in this case, that's exactly what's happening. So every time, um, every return value from this thing uh, is always a function until you pass it no arguments, at which point you get back an integer, right? There we go. So I'm saying, Pass in one, I'm getting back some kind of function, and then pass in no uh, parameters, and I'm getting back the result one. Okay, and over here, uh, pass in one, I get back a function. Pass in two, I get back another function. Pass in no uh, parameter, and then I get uh, an integer. So how does this work? Let's take a look. So we have the function add. It takes in a number, and it defaults it to null. So if you don't pass in a number, you get null. For now, let's assume that we've actually passed in a number like one. So uh, we have a ternary here. Is it null? In this case, we've passed in the number one, so it's not null. So instead of uh, returning the number, we're going to return a function. Now, this is a uh, an arrow function. These are new in PHP 7.4. Okay. In that function, we're creating next number and we're defaulting it to null. So we're returning a function that looks very similar to add. It does the exact same check. Is next number null? If so, it just returns the number. And then uh, if not, it calls the add function again. So what we're doing here is th this isn't actually recursion. We're just calling a function and then sometimes returning a function, which sometimes returns a function, which sometimes returns a function. But at any point, if it doesn't uh, return a function, it's just going to return a number. Okay, so let's try and make this work um, like we did below where we did uh, this. Add one, two, and then nothing like that. Okay, so the first time through, number is one. So return is null number. Uh, in this case, we don't want to return the number because the number is not null. We're going to return a function. Okay. The second time through, uh, we pass in two. So now this time, we, we've passed in two to this function right here. Uh, is it null? It's not. Okay, so we're going to return the result of the add function, uh, add function with one and two. So add three, right? That, that's the equivalent of add three. Okay, so now, now let's pretend we're just working with add three. So add three, is it null? It's not, so let's return a function. Uh, and then finally, um, we return that function and we call it without any parameters. So then we actually just get the number back. I, I know that's really confusing. Um, it takes, your, takes a while to wrap your head around it. But uh, again, you wouldn't use this in a production code base. It's just for fun. Okay, so that last one was, was a little tricky. Maybe you got it, maybe you didn't. Try this one out. So again, I'm going to show you how this works. This is a calculator. Um, so I say new calculator and I say calculator two plus four, just as a as an argument, or nine times eight, or zero minus three. So let's run it, uh, PHP calculator, and you can see that I'm actually getting the right answers from this thing. Um, so how could something like this possibly work? I'm not passing in any arguments 
uh, to these methods on the calculator. Uh, so I'm going to pause the video again. You take a moment, think about how could something like this actually work, and then we'll see if you uh, got the right answer. I got the idea from this, uh, from, from Laravel, where there's a, a ridiculous thing where you can do something like user, uh, where, name, Tom, or something like that. Uh, and it, it defines this method where name. It looks and it says, oh, name. Okay, I can, uh, I know there's probably a column called name. I'll find a user where name is Tom, something like that. I think you can actually do uh, something like this. So where name, Tom, and age, and then you can uh, throw in your age. I'm 38. So I, I thought that was kind of cool in Laravel. Um, I wouldn't recommend you really use it because it makes the code uh, harder to read. And for some people's IDs, it just uh, throws them for a loop. But getting back to our calculator, how, do, how does this thing actually work? So let's take a look here. Uh, so calculator is a PHP class. It has an array of numbers. Uh, these are just the numbers written out as strings, zero to nine. And then we've got z symbols. This is an associative array where plus is plus, minus is minus, times is times, and uh, division is missing. Uh, and there's a reason for that, uh, which you might be able to figure out why. And uh, maybe, maybe I'll tell you later on. Okay, so the first thing here is we have a pr public function called underscore underscore call. This is a magic method in PHP. Um, now, there's, there's nothing actually magical about it. Obviously, this is programming, but it's actually called a magic method. And what it does is it says, if you've called for a method on this object and I can't find that method defined anywhere, I'm going to first send it, I'm gonna check if underscore underscore call is defined. If so, I'm gonna pass it there. So I haven't defined um, these methods, zero minus three, nine times eight, two plus four. So the, uh, the call method here is going to pass in the name of the method uh, as, a, as a string. Um, and then it's also gonna pass in the arguments, but in this case, I don't need any arguments. All right, all I do here is I, parse the arguments, I'll show you that below, but that's less interesting. And then I use the eval function to evaluate it. So uh, parse the arguments, I'll, I'll get an array of some type, something like, uh, you know, three uh, plus four, four or something like that. And then I evaluate that. So three plus four is seven. Okay, and, and that's really all there is to it. So I can, I'll go into the uh, parse arguments uh, again, this is this is less interesting, but you, you get you get the general idea already. So parse arguments is going to split up uh, the string that you're given. Uh, it's a camel case string. It's going to split it up into uh, an array of different arguments. So at this point, you'll have uh, something. You'll end up with something like like this. So zero uh, zero plus three. Can't type when the camera's on, I don't know why. Uh, zero plus three. And then we're going to array map it and we're gonna say, okay, is it numeric? Uh, so first we're gonna look in numbers. Okay, can we find it in there? Uh, if we do find it, is it numeric? Return it. Um, and, and we're doing this array search is gonna give us the index. So if you actually look up here, the index of zero is zero, the index of one is one, the index of two is two and so on. Okay, next we're going to uh, search through the symbols. And again, array search is going to give us the index. In this case, the index uh, of plus is the symbol plus, the index of minus is the symbol minus. So if we find any key there, then we're gonna return it. Otherwise, we're gonna throw an exception uh, because it's invalid, right? So if I, uh, if I tried to add two plus hot dog or something like that, that's not gonna work. Okay, and, uh, and that's it. So then you get back up here, you evaluate it and you return it. Just in case you doubt that this actually works, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one for you here. So calculator zero minus three, now let's do uh, nine times four, uh, nine times four times uh, seven, something like that. And then let's run it. 252. I trust that that's right. I actually don't know. I could pull up a calculator, but uh, that's probably right. Now, why don't I have division in this thing? Can you, can you think about why wouldn't I have division here? Well, the way that you would write uh, division would be something like, um, let's say nine. So nine divided 
divided by three, right? And that should return three. Why won't that work? So it won't work because right here, divided by is actually two words. Uh, that's the fault of English. It's not my fault, so I can't be blamed here. Uh, so I could do something terrible like nine division three, or I could make the code above much more complicated, um, but I didn't want to, so I didn't. Okay, so I hope that was useful. Again, this isn't code that I would write every day. Uh, it's not code that I would put in production or expect uh, my coworkers to approve in a PR, but it is kind of fun to think about what is possible in the language and uh, to be able to look at the outside of a function and try and guess at what's actually happening on the inside of the function, or at a minimum, what must be happening on the inside of the function just for that function uh, signature to actually work. Okay, so uh, that, that's it. And if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I will answer you. Talk to you later.